Good morning, friends. Don't touch. That's the chicken food. You wanna come feed the chickens? Chicken. Chicken, that's right, chicken. Except for we've been free ranging them, so they're either gonna all follow me or they're going to get their lunch later. Like literally, they're all in the yard. Hey, they're following you. Are they following me? Am I your breakfast lunch lady? All right, girls. They, they might look like boys, but they are oh, spaghetti. definitely girls. Spaghetti, yummy. Someone is very happy now. Who is? They all are. Are the chickens eating? Eating. Eating, that's right. Are you scared I'll of hold the, the bucket? Mommy, like the black one did as before. He did, he did jump kick me. We do not have any roosters. I was at the co-op and I saw someone was giving away their Americana rooster for free. It was a 16 week old, so I'm assuming just they had some extra boys and they had already, they, they were already gone. So we don't have a rooster, but hopefully we will. So that way we can um, allow our flock to grow naturally. Bogossi, we'll see. Bogossi is already on duty of keeping them safe from coyotes. So Gossie is our guard goose, but we definitely, we only want a rooster for breeding sake. We've had a bad experience with mean roosters. Cassie, you holding the bucket? Are you holding the bucket? Play. Play. Away? See the big thing? Oh, it says, that is, it looks like an egg. Kinsley, like she's talking to you. What? You see a chicken? Get it. You see the chicken? Okay, so I have been wanting to film this video of how in the world Emily came into our home. So Emily is our golden retriever rescue dog that has been with us for a few weeks now and she has settled in so great and I can't wait to tell you and show you a little bit more about her. Before I move forward with sharing the rest of Emily's precious adoption story, I wanted to thank our sponsor for today's video, Green Chef. So the week before we got Emily, we were actually on our last family vacation without having a family dog and Philip didn't know the whole time and we were actually talking about how we were going to get away when we had animals. And I was just thinking, he has no idea that a dog is going to be in his home in just a few days. And I was thinking about that and we still like to travel and get away. And so we actually really love to stay at different Airbnbs and we would just pick one that was a dog friendly location. And when we go to Airbnbs, we really love to utilize Green Chef they are so awesome. So I know that we like to cook a lot from scratch, but Philip and I were talking about how that's not everybody's luxury, that not everybody has those skills yet. And a lot of people are just getting home from work and they would just really like to have something that makes their life a lot easier, but still feeding their family high nutritious meals. So Green Chef is so amazing because all of the ingredients come in these bags that get delivered right to your door. And so if you are not wanting to run to the grocery store, meal plan, you can just order Green Chef to your house. Or let's say you are going on vacation and you are going to an Airbnb where they have nothing there. You can just pack up your Green Chef and bring it with you and you are going to have nice homemade nutritious meals and you have the perfect amount of ingredients for those meals. So what everyone's gonna love about Green Chef is that they are a USDA certified organic company and you can specifically pick your meal plans that fit the way that your family eats. Anywhere from keto to paleo to gluten-free to vegetarian to fast and fit to Mediterranean, you can pick the meal plan that is right for you. So everything is already pre-made and measured out for you. So it's perfect. Imagine taking it out onto vacation and knowing that you've got everything. Or if you're busy working and you are coming home from a long work day and you just want someone to make your life a lot easier, you have this food delivered to your doorstep, or maybe you are trying to grow your culinary techniques and you're just trying to learn how to make more delicious meals for your family. This is an awesome option. Every time we get Green Chef, the girls rave about how delicious and how much they love their meals and I, I'm trying not to be offended of the other meals that I serve them on a regular basis. Thanks, Mom, for this so good. It's so good. It's so really good. So good. You're welcome. I like it too because all the chicken and these carrots. 
I love it. It looks like chicken. Does this mean they like this food better than my food? It definitely does. Should I be offended? <laughs> no. But it's true. It just, it reminds me of different meals and techniques and spices that I could be adding into our other meals. So I'm just really thankful for the expert chefs at Green Chef that come up with these meals. My kids love it and we love it too. So if you guys want to try out Green Chef, I have a discount code for you. It is Phil and Alex 130 to get $130 off plus free shipping off of your first order. So go ahead and check them out in the link in the description below. It is greenchef.us slash Phil and Alex 130. Again, the promo code is Phil and Alex 130. Thank you again to Green Chef for sponsoring this video. Now for the rest of Emily's story. So my husband, Philip, has been asking for a dog for our whole marriage. <laughs> we used to have this little uh, hand motion that I would tell him and I would say, house, baby, puppy, and it would be in that order. Well, we went a little bit out of order. So before we lived here, we lived in a condo, then we lived in our RV full time. This is our first house. This is our first property. So once we got to this property, I knew it was only a matter of time before I couldn't drag my feet any longer and we would be getting our first dog. And so the whole time that we ever talked about a dog, we talked about a golden retriever. Okay, so when we made it to this property, we started talking about, well, we really want to build a hobby farm, homestead, whatever you want to call it. And so we were looking into breeds like a Great Pyrenees. We both really like Bernice Mountain Dogs. But we were also talking, well, do we still stick with what we've always wanted, which is a golden retriever family dog. So I first decided to surprise our family a couple of months ago, and I actually was really surprised when the farm that we are hoping to get our dairy cow through, they also breed golden retrievers. And what was so cool and so awesome is that they actually breed specifically for service dogs. And not that we would necessarily need to train the dog to be a service dog, but it was just really neat that they would have that demeanor. And Philip has shared that he has ADHD and sometimes some anxiety can come with that. So I really wanted him to have a dog that was very comforting to him during different um, seasons. So through all of this, I was talking to her and was sharing on how I would love a golden retriever, but I would really like to rescue a older dog that just needs a good home. But for our family, we my higher priority was for us to get a golden retriever that we have been talking about our whole marriage. And I just knew that that was going to be really hard to find in an adult dog. I went on the hunt. Philip said, I feel like you're not being present and I was on my phone all the time on the computer researching looking up places I ended up applying I found a couple of rescue golden retriever rescue programs they were actually both of them were in Ohio and one of them said that they would only adopt out to surrounding states that didn't include us the other one it just had some verbiage on their website that I thought it was a long shot for them to even possibly consider us and indeed the time passed in which they would have reached out to me if we would have been a good fit for any of the dogs and I knew that we had young kids it was our first family pet we didn't have a vet established that I could put on a form we didn't have a specific fenced in backyard and so I just knew that rescuing a dog was going to be almost impossible. So I just started, I kept going forward with the idea that we were going to be getting a golden retriever puppy and it was going to be a lot of work. We don't mind the extra work, but we do have a lot going on this year that having puppy energy that we needed to put out was, was just going to be one more thing added onto our plate. So I was really excited to go forward with this puppy. I was going to surprise the family and then we were going to go pick up the puppy together. But I was sharing with her that I was also actively looking for um, an adult golden retriever. And I ended up going to a breeder that was in our town. 
Now, there aren't very many golden retriever breeders that had puppies even available over the Christmas season. And so the fact that there was one puppy in our town, I just thought, okay, I just need to go peek and just see and see this puppy that is closer and not necessarily hours and hours away um, where this other farm is. So I was honest with this other farm that we were talking to that I just saw this puppy and I just wanted to go peek at a closer option. And I showed up and the puppy was, you know, doing the typical chewing at the shoelaces and just being a puppy. And in my heart, I was thinking, I'm doing this for Philip. I'm doing this for Philip. Huh. Yes, I was doing it for Philip. I don't know how it came up, but I was just talking to him and I randomly mentioned on how I had applied to so many places for an adult, adult golden retriever rescue and it was just almost impossible to find. So this is why we were moving forward with a puppy. And his eyes kind of lit up and looked at me and said, actually, I have just rescued seven golden retrievers. So I mentioned that this breeder was hours closer to us. It, they were in our same town, but they also, their puppy was actually also going to be ready on Christmas versus after the new year. So I just wanted to go see, and it was, I think it was the perfect um, situation where it was placed on my heart to just go peek at this puppy to see if we wanted to have the puppy box on Christmas for the family. And I think that it, I just got led there because a miracle upon miracles is that he had rescue golden retrievers that he needed to find homes for. So you wanna tell them? You wanna tell them about your first home? So Emily's first home was actually a breeder. So this breeder in our town actually knew another breeder that was about an hour away and he tried to get a hold of them and was calling for a while and just could not get a hold of anybody and just felt some discernment to go check on them. And he ended up going up there. With the berries. And here in the background. He's so cute. Can you go with daddy? Okay. So when he got there, the man that was looking over the dogs was not responsive. So he was barely hanging on. He called 911. He got a hold of the nephew and got this gentleman to a hospital. Thank you. Thank you. And then he knew that the lady had gone into a nursing home a couple years prior and she had actually passed away the week before. So there was no one caring for the dogs. He found the dogs in a very, very frail state. And so the nephew asked him, can you please find homes for these Goldens? So the nephew decided to take three of the Goldens that were the gentleman's favorites. And there's a lot that was kind of being said in the undertone of sounding like there was some favoritism in the dogs that maybe the lady that was in the nursing home um, might have treated all the dogs respectfully. It sounds like this gentleman may have not been treating the dogs very well and the environment, I have not gone into detail on what the environment really looked like, but I do know when they showed up, they found Emily in a kennel having given birth to eight puppies and she had no food and she had no water. And come to find out that Emily's teeth are worn down very significantly because she was trying to chew her way out of the kennel to save herself and her puppies. Now, some of those puppies didn't make it. They rescued the rest of the puppies as well as these adult Goldens. These puppies have found homes and they still had four golden retrievers that they needed to find homes for. And that's when I was there saying that I would love to rescue a adult golden and his eyes got wide and he still had four golden retrievers that he needed to find homes for. So I really don't know how ethical 
this breeder was in, in breeding their dogs. So the man that was taking care of the dogs, it, it did come across that maybe he did have favorites as well as the breeder from our town, the daughter had seen him kick a small dog off of his porch. So I really don't know how well the dogs were taken care of. I'm not sure of the trauma. The biggest trauma that we know of is that Emily had given birth with no food or water. None of these dogs had food or water. They were so malnourished. They were skin and bone. But I truly don't know the extent of trauma that all of these dogs went through. So we ended up taking Emily to the vet and she indeed has a very gray face. I know when we shared our photo on Instagram, it, she looks very, very, very senior. She is actually a six year old, so kind of mid middle of her life. And, but her gray face, the vet said, was from an, an extreme immense amount of stress. And so if you kind of look at her ears and her body, I think she looks younger, but in her face, she definitely has grayed a lot more prematurely than if she was in a non-stress situation. When we brought her home, we also noticed that she had sores on her upper lip and we weren't sure where they were com where they had come from. And the vet said those are actually stress sores. So that was from her chewing on her lips. And within a couple of days of her being in her home, those sores started healing and then they were gone. It was, it was really encouraging that she just needed a good safe environment. So when we first brought her home day one, she was definitely very quiet and scared. She wasn't skittish, but she was just very mild tempered and just stayed pretty still. She looked really sad in her face. It was very heart wrenching seeing how she was, but by day two, we already saw signs of her wagging her tail, her having a bit more energy, rolling her back on the carpet. And so we knew we were moving in the right direction. So where is Emily at now, a couple of weeks in? She is such a cuddle bug. She wants to be by one of our sides at all times. She loves the constant pets. She has zero aggression. One of the biggest things of what I've heard is food, aggression especially with rescues and I know my I, f I didn't even realize this my mom let me know that our rescue dog from when I was a kid had food aggression issues I just was never I, I wasn't made aware of that um, and Emily doesn't have any of that she is totally calm not snippy she doesn't she's never growled or she's never barked so I'm hoping that she will get her voice back when she feels comfortable and confident I know that there's a big range of dogs having trauma and then not having a bark but Emily is so soft I would say that's the best explanation of her with our kids she is soft the kids when we first brought her home, Cassie was bringing little um, pieces of her food and setting it down by her, um, taking treats out of their hand, everything. She is just very soft. She is very sweet, and we could not ask for a better family dog. The biggest bummer that we did find out is we took Emily to the vet. We took her in pretty quickly because we wanted to get her checked out. We knew that she was nine weeks out from having delivered puppies that she had just been through so much. So they were able to kind of urgently get us in and they did tests on her and listen to her. They said she looked great, amazing, healthy, but we did send blood work and it came back that she has heartworms. And so it is a six to 12 week course of medication and injections and we're learning a lot about it quickly and it's a big investment that we are pouring into our family dog to help her get back to her full health and let her have her energy back. So I think we're actually at the three week mark of Emily being home and we left her for the very first time this past Sunday to go to church. And we closed her into our bedroom where her bed is, where she sleeps at night and we brought her food in and we have vinyl floor in there and tile in the bathroom. So we thought it was like the best place to keep her. Well, we came home to a clawed at, chewed at, practically ripped down a, 
uh, trim around the door. And we were nervous of, oh my goodness, how are we going to do this? She just has a lot of separation anxiety and it's understandable with everything that she has been through. She is just unaware of, am I still going to be safe? Is this still going to be a safe environment? And I have a praise report since then. If you guys saw that on my Instagram where I shared that, that we left her yesterday to take the girls to dance and we had to run a few errands and we let her be in the full house. We wanted to try this before we move forward with other. Yes, baby. Throw it. Good job. So we really wanted to try one more time, allowing her to be in the whole house before we totally jumped in with the different methods to help a dog with separation anxiety. And I have a big, huge praise report. We came home to our house being completely fine. We actually just found this morning, there was a couple of little claw marks at the laundry room door to the garage, but it was very minimal. And I think it just gives us a lot of hope that she probably had way too much trauma in our bedroom being in a closed and confined space. And it makes sense that she was in that closed and confined space in the kennel. I really wanna ask the person who rescued her, how big was that kennel that they rescued in? How, how small of a space was that? But either way, no matter how big of a kennel that was, she had had puppies, no food, no water, chewing her way out of metal trying to get out. I just can't imagine the trauma that she faced going through all of that and probably a couple of years of having someone watching over her that wasn't super friendly with her. So I want to thank you guys so much for being interested in Emily's story and we are just really excited to have our very first family dog. If you guys watch the other videos we mentioned another dog Chloe that is also needing a home. And we've actually had a couple of hiccups. We're supposed to go have a play date with her to see how Cassidy does now that she's a little bit more comfortable with a dog. But with our family being in town and then us being snowed in and now their family, the breeders that rescued her are, are sick. And so we are just on pause with our play date with Chloe. So that is still to come to see if we are going to be having two rescue dogs or not. But for now, we have the most amazing, wonderful family dog. We love Emily to bits and pieces, and we could not ask for a better family dog. We just love her. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in our next video. Go let your love multiply. Bye, guys. Yeah. What are you doing dragging your body all over the place? <laughs>